Hello everybody, welcome back to another practice. My name is Ben and today we'll be doing a full practice for the whole body, really creating some good energy as we flow around our mats. So let's go ahead and get started in a tabletop. As you get into your tabletop position, begin rocking the weight around. So maybe you draw some circles with the shoulders over the wrists a few times. And don't just feel your wrists on the ground, feel your knuckles on the ground. Feel each fingered pad. <laughs> and then keep doing the same thing with the option to flip the palms around so your fingertips face back toward the knees. Try to really flip them good. And then same thing, just rock the weight around, distribute the weight a little bit, and come into your hands. Try to take some deep breaths as you do this. Finding the presence that comes with sensation. We'll come back to normal with the hands. You're welcome to roll out the wrists a few times. And then sit back to the heels with the toes tucked. Try to get the toes very tucked, so including the little pinky toes. Interlace the fingers in front of your heart. Take an inhale. Exhale, flip and push and round the spine. Inhale, palms go overhead, lift up through the chest like a cow pose. Exhale, round and push forward. Separate the shoulder blades away from the spine, push the shoulders down from the ears. Inhale, rise up, find a back bend. Stick the butt behind you, look up. Exhale, push forward and round. Inhale, reach up, find a back bend. Lifting over something. Exhale, push forward and round. Inhale, back bend and open. This time, exhale, cactus the arms, pull the palms into fists, pull the energy down. Bring the hands back to the mat. You're welcome to tap out the tops of the feet a few times. And then find a plank pose. Step one foot back, then the other. Try to be very strong in your legs in this plank pose. And then from plank pose, downward facing dog. Sometimes it's nice to do a plank into a down dog because the plank gives us a good length. It gives us a good distance from our hands to our feet. And when we get to the down dog, we can keep that length and just add the lifting. Butt faces up toward the sky, drive through the armpits, lengthen through the side bodies. Keep a little bend in the knees so that you can be buoyant. Then from your downward facing dog, reach the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Take a wide step, right foot outside of the right hand. Keep the back knee lifted off the mat and then twist the right hand up to the sky. Look up to your right hand. Lengthen from collarbone to collarbone. Keep pushing into the mat with your left big toe. Take an inhale. Exhale, bring the right hand down. It's like you're kind of diagonal on your mat, pivot into a wide-legged fold, and then carry it right into a skandhasana at the back of the mat. Again, your right foot might still be kind of at the outside edge of the mat. It might be off the mat. That's okay. Find your footing in the skandhasana, already working deep into the hips. Shift forward, and then step into malasana squat at the top of the mat. So turn forward, left foot steps outside of left hand, sit into the hips. Sit tall in the chest and try to lift through the crown of the head. You're welcome to bring hands at heart center. Rock side to side if you want. Take one more inhale. Exhale, fingertips to the mat, wide-legged forward fold. You're welcome to keep the feet off the edges of the mat or however wide you want to go. Grab opposite elbows, take a bend into the knees and let the upper body kind of drape to the space in between the legs. Take a nice exhale here. From here, bend into the knees. 
Bring the feet back to hips width distance. Take a chair pose. Sit back in the hips, up with the arms. From your chair pose, shift the weight more toward the right foot. Get light in the left foot, and then bring the hands to heart center as you extend the left foot back behind you for a crouching warrior three. So right knee stays bent, but try to straighten your left leg as it reaches back. Maybe you even point the toes behind you to get a little bit longer. And then slowly land the left foot of the back of the mat, high crescent lunge. As the left foot lands, the arms sweep up to the sky. Take a few breaths in your lunge. You can add on any shifts or movements that feel good to you. We're strengthening, but we're also feeling the stretch into the front of the left hip. Let's take one more inhale. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Downward facing dog. Right foot steps back to meet the left foot. Drive the hips up and back. Butt faces up toward the sky. Find your mountain pose-like position in down dog. Mountain pose just meaning like the hips are the peak of the mountain and the feet and the hands are the base camp. Reach your left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot all the way to the outside of your left hand. Once you find your lunge, twist the left hand up to the sky. And then feel yourself reaching in both directions. The left hand reaches higher, higher, higher. The right palm is stable into the foundation of the floor. Take an inhale. Exhale, left hand comes down. Pivot the feet, kind of coming through this wide-legged forward fold and carry it all the way to the back of the mat, skandhasana lunge. Sit as low as you want into it. Try to be active in your left leg, engaging the thigh muscles. Stick with it for a moment. And then come to the top of the mat. You can use your hands to crawl, to help you crawl. Malasana squat, turn forward, step the right foot wide, and then sit into the squat. You can always use a block under your hips. You can always take any adjustments that you need. And that's kind of the nice part about practicing from home is you can always kind of take what you need. You don't need to ask anyone's permission. Take a forward fold, bring the fingertips to the ground, pivot the toes in a little bit, and relax the head down. Take a nice exhale, maybe make a sound. Bring your feet back toward hips width distance, chair pose. Sit back in the hips, up with the arms. Find your breath first. Shift the weight a little bit more onto your left foot. Almost like you could start to float the right foot, pull the hands to your heart center, and then reach the right foot back, crouching warrior three. Try to straighten through the right leg, try to point the right toes back. And then see how slowly you can land the right foot at the back of the mat for your high crescent lunge. Soft landing. And then we sweep the arms up. We have about three, four breaths in the pose. Find what feels like your center, where you can be present. And if the mind is wandering, then try to just watch the mind wander without too much attachment without too much care. Last breath in. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Downward facing dog. Left foot meets the right. Feel your down dog getting a little bit stronger every time we land in it. Inhale, sweep the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, right foot. Big sweeping step outside of the right hand. Inhale, twist the right hand up to the sky. Find your rotation. Exhale all the way to Skandasana lunge at the back of your mat. Move like honey, nice and steady. Inhale, start to shift forward and turn forward. 
and then exhale, find the Malasana squat, left foot steps outside of the right foot. Inhale, sit a little bit taller, lift through the chest, lift through the head. Exhale, forward fold, and pivot the feet back towards hips width distance. Inhale, lift the chest for a chair pose, and sit low in the hips. Then exhale, sit a little bit lower. <sighs> Inhale, start to float the right foot one inch off the mat. And then exhale, shoot the right leg back in space. Inhale, take a high crescent lunge as you softly land the right foot at the back of the mat. Exhale, hands down to the ground, downward facing dog. Switching it up a little bit, taking the left side before the right on that little movement. Inhale, left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the left foot up to the top of the mat, or outside of the left foot, that is. Good. Inhale, twist the left hand up to the sky, rotate. Exhale, back of the mat, take your skandhasana lunge. Slowly crawl your way back there. Inhale, start to come forward again. Look out in front of you. And then exhale, the right foot will step outside of the right hand, malasana squat. Inhale, find the squat, lift tall through the chest, long through the spine. Exhale, find your forward fold, let the head relax down, hips back towards, uh, feet back toward hips width distance. Inhale, lift the arms, chair pose. Exhale, start to shift the weight towards the right foot. Inhale, float the left foot one inch off the mat. And then exhale, reach the left leg back, crouching warrior three. Inhale for a high crescent lunge as the left foot lands at the back of the mat, arms up. Exhale, hands down to the ground, step back to downward facing dog. Take one deep breath all the way in. All the way out. From down dog, bend into the knees, look forward. And then ripple into a plank pose, round the spine as you shift to the plank and go through the plank all the way to upward facing dog. And you can keep the toes tucked here. Keep driving the heels back super strong in the legs in this toe tucked upward facing dog. And don't let the hips drop all the way. So imagine you're still kind of trying to lift the hips as you pull the hips forward. So we're not dumping, we're lifting and pulling forward. From up dog, go back to down dog. And then a couple times with our breath. So inhale forward to up dog. Use a big inhale to wave you all the way. And then exhale, bend the knees and press back downward facing dog. Inhale, journey all the way to the toes tucked up dog. Exhale, roll back to the down dog. Bend the knees, scoop the hips back. Last one, inhale, roll forward. Toes tucked, upward facing dog. Exhale, press backward, downward facing dog. Lift right leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Right foot, wide step outside of the right hand. Inhale, left hand plants, right hand twists up to the sky. Exhale, skandhasana lunge at the back of the mat. Inhale, start to shift forward, look out in front of you, prepare for the step, and then exhale, step left foot outside of left hand, malasana squat. Inhale, once you get here, lift through the chest. Exhale, forward fold, pivot the feet back toward hips width. Inhale, take your chair pose. Exhale, shift the weight a little bit to the left. Inhale, float the right foot by a millimeter or an inch or two, and then exhale, shoot the right leg back, crouching warrior three. Inhale to a high crescent lunge, soft landing with the right foot. Exhale, hands to the ground, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, sweep the left leg up to the sky, and then step left foot outside of left hand. Take an inhale to twist left hand up to the sky. Exhale to a skandhasana lunge at the back of the mat. Inhale, shift to the top of the mat, look out in front of you. Exhale, step the right foot outside of the right hand, sit low for malasana. Inhale in the squat. Exhale, forward fold, bring the feet back in a little bit. Inhale, chair pose, sit low in the hips, up with the arms. Exhale, sit a little more to the right foot, hands to heart center. Inhale, float left foot by an inch. Exhale, reach the left leg back, crouching warrior three. Inhale, land the left foot back of the mat, high crescent lunge. 
ears open, hands down to the ground, and then sweep the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Bend the right knee, open the hip, and create a little bit of space for a moment. And then close it off and step the right foot all the way up to the outside of the right hand. So big step, right foot is forward, outside of the right hand. On your inhale, plant left hand, twist right hand up. Exhale, skandasana, back of the mat. Keep the energy flowing. Inhale, start to shift forward, look out in front of you. Exhale, step forward, malasana, squat, both feet are wide. Inhale, sit into the squat, lift the chest high. Exhale, forward fold, bring the feet in a few inches. Inhale, sit into the chair pose. Exhale, sit a little more to your left foot, hands to heart center. Inhale, float the right foot by an inch. Exhale, reach the right foot back, crouching warrior three. Inhale to a high crescent lunge with a soft landing. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Three-legged dog, left foot goes from in front of you up to the sky behind you. Bend the left knee, open the hip, find a little bit of space. And then close it off, left foot steps outside of the left hand. Inhale here, twist the left hand to the sky. Exhale, skandasana, back of the mat. Inhale, start to look out in front of you, shift forward. Exhale, step right foot outside of your right hand. Inhale to your malasana, squat, sit into it, lift the chest, lift the head. Exhale, forward fold, start to bring the feet back towards hips width distance. Inhale, take a chair pose. Exhale, sit a little bit more to your right foot. Inhale, float the left foot an inch off the mat. Exhale, kick it back to warrior three. Inhale, high crescent with a soft landing. Exhale, hands to the ground, three-legged dog. Right leg sweeps up to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hips. Explore your space. And then step the right foot all the way outside of the right hand. We're almost done, I promise. Right hand twists up to the sky, inhale. Exhale, skandasana, back of the mat. Inhale, start to look forward. Shift forward. Exhale, left foot steps outside of left hand. Inhale, malasana, squat. Exhale, forward fold. Feel free to heel toe the feet in. Chair pose on the inhale. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper. Sit the weight into the left foot. Inhale, float the right foot by an inch. Exhale, reach the right foot back, crouching warrior three. Inhale to a high crescent lunge. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Three-legged dog, left foot up to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. We've made it to the last round or the last side even. Left foot steps outside of the left hand. Inhale, twist your left hand up to the sky, open up. Exhale to a skandasana lunge, shift all the way to the back of the mat. Inhale, start to look to the space in front of you, shift forward. Exhale, full step, right foot outside of the right hand, malasana squat. Stay here for an inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, take a forward fold as you bring the feet in. Chair pose on the inhale, we're almost done. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper, shift the weight towards the right foot. Inhale, float the left foot by an inch. Exhale, reach the left leg back, warrior three. Inhale to your high crescent with a soft landing in the left foot. Exhale, hands down to the ground, downward facing dog. As you get to downward facing dog, bend into the knees to prepare. And then ripple all the way through to your strong leg, toes tucked upward, facing dog. Stay engaged through the legs. As you pull the hips forward, still try to lift the hips in space. Pull the chest through the shoulders. Press the shoulders down away from the ears. Drive the heels back, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Half pigeon, step the right shin through. Let's slow down. Right, we're still early in our practice, but we've already gotten quite deep into the hips. We've built a lot of heat. So let's slow down. And let's deepen into the space that we've already built for ourselves. Option in this pigeon pose to go ahead and just find a forward fold. Option to stay upright like I'm sort of demoing right now. And you also have the option to do some lifts and lowers if you want to work on your active mobility a little bit.
I'm kind of demoing those right now. Just trying to use my strength in the outer hip to lift and lower. If you're doing the lifts and lowers, feel free to use your hands to help you. And eventually we'll all kind of settle into somewhat of a fold and just take a few more breaths, relaxing here. Slowly release. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Step back, down dog. So tuck the toes under behind you. Lift up, step back. From here, other side, left leg to the sky. And then step the left shin through. Move into a half pigeon. You have time. My personal preference is to spend some time upright. Then do my lifts and lowers, my oscillations. And then settle into more of a passive fold. I just like to feel into pigeon in a variety of ways. I think it's, uh, it's quite deep space, <laughs> at least for me. So I like to kind of approach it from a few different angles and intentions. Just to try to get the full uh, benefit, if you will, out of the pose. Start to release up out of the pose. Plant the palms down. Step back, downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, let's go ahead and lift the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. And step through to warrior two at the top of the mat. So find the top of the mat, rotate the left heel down, and then rise up. And notice how it feels. It's not super often we do warrior two right after a pigeon pose, right? Sometimes it's the other way around. So notice how it feels to come into this warrior two with uh, the hip opening that we've done so far in this practice. Hey, Jack, come here, come here. He's trying to chew on the microphone cord. <laughs> you trying to cut out our audio? <laughs> you want to be the star of the show? That's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Deepen your warrior two by a little bit and then reverse your triangle. So lift up all the way and straighten through your right leg as you reach the right hand up. Take an inhale. Exhale, head toward triangle pose. Keep squeezing both sets of thigh muscles. Strong in the legs. Maybe you even keep the right hand floating off the mat today. Your choice. Bring the right hand down and then circle the left hand down to the mat. Step forward, turn forward, and find your fold. Relax the head down, bounce out the knees a few times. Then bend both knees, rise up to standing, sweep arms up to the sky, inhale. Bring both hands to your heart, exhale. Let's take a nice deep breath in. Exhale out. Inhale, sweep both arms to the sky. Squeeze the glutes, press the hips forward. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms down, step back to plank pose. From plank pose, you're welcome to flow through a chaturanga and an upward facing dog. Or you can always just skip that 
and step back to down dog. From downward facing dog, lift left foot to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot to the sky, war or it is to the top of the mat, warrior two. <laughs> Find your warrior pose. Maybe you flip the palms up, open the shoulders. Maybe you take a little bit of a deeper bend into your left knee to really bring your knee right over your ankle. Take a few slow breaths. Find your ability to create ease even when you find yourself in challenging circumstances. Reverse your triangle. Extend the legs. Reach up. Inhale. Triangle pose. Lengthen through your left side body and then eventually lengthen through your right side body. Keep the left hand floating or let it find its home. You have a couple breaths. Keep pushing both feet into the ground. Left hand down, right hand circles down to meet it. Turn forward, come high onto the back toes, and then step forward into your fold. Bend into both knees, relax the head down, and then press into the toes, rise to standing, arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale, bring the hands to your heart. Inhale, bring hands to the sky, open up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bring hands to the ground, step back, and you can take your flow back to down dog, or just step right into your downward facing dog. And by take your flow, I mean a chaturanga dandasana, followed by an urdhva mukha svanasana, an upward facing dog. Once we meet back in down dog, sweep right leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step the right foot all the way through top of the mat. If you have trouble with those step throughs, things hips to the sky, hips to the sky, hips to the sky, give yourself space. Anyways, let's land in warrior two. Once again, you have a few solid breaths here. A true warrior doesn't rush away from conflict to move on to the next thing to try to find a more easeful space. A true warrior has the patience to sit in the mud, if you will, to sit in one's own circumstances to remain non-attached even while we put our effort towards something. Reverse your triangle. Lift the energy up. Inhale. Trikonasana. Triangle pose. Strong in both thighs. Long in both side bodies. I feel like the left hip is kind of bumping towards the back of your space. And then the heart is reaching forward and out. Take an inhale. Exhale, circle the left hand down. Turn forward, come high onto the left toes. Step forward, top of the mat. Bend into both knees, rise to stand. Inhale, arms up, or Hastasana. Exhale, pull your hands to your heart. This time, float the left knee into the chest. Lift up through the right arm. And then connect the left hand to the left foot or ankle. Take Natarajasana, dancer's pose. I've been enjoying binding onto the inside edge of my left ankle and then flexing the toes back. Finding the energy, hinging forward a little bit, lifting through your left thigh. Two breaths. Release. Come out of it. Take what you need for a moment. You can shake out the legs, shake out the arms. Take a sip of water, roll your shoulders around. Just kind of loosen up your own energy for a second. I know we've been moving and grooving in the flow in today's practice. At least I am, hopefully <laughs> you are as well. All right, go ahead and move into dance for other side. So right knee into the chest, left hand to the sky. Bring the right foot into the right hand, or if you want to go with me, then bind onto your right ankle, find the connection there, and then expand. And let your breath flow.
Last breath. Release. Right foot comes down. Soften your stature. And then inhale, sweep both arms to the sky. Ordva Hastasana. Exhale, bend the knees. Find your forward folds. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, bring the hands to the mat. Step back to plank and move through your flow. Or skip it and find your downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, let's lift left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot through all the way top of the mat, warrior two, as the right heel rotates down. Open the arms. Find your strong warrior breath. Knowing that strong means calm. Strong means compassionate toward yourself. Strong means embracing the present moment. No matter where, what kind of present moment we find ourselves in, in pleasure and in pain, in success and in failure, we find the present moment, we accept all things, and we let go simultaneously. Let's reverse our triangle. Inhale up. And then work into your trikonasana. We've been here before. Feel into the space that you have and try to control the space you have. Bring both hands down to the mat. Turn forward, come high onto the right toes. Look forward, step forward. Bend into the knees, press into the toes. Rise to stand, inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Lift the left knee into the chest. This time, twist. Right hand to outside of left knee. Stay here, or if you want to, grab the outside edge of your foot. Try to keep your balance as you extend the left leg. You can also keep the left knee bent a little bit. <laughs> and embrace the balance challenge. Try to sit up tall in the spine and take a few more breaths here. When you're ready to release, you're welcome to slowly release. Just like last time, give yourself a few breaths in between sides. Slow down for a moment, catch your breath. And then switch sides, right knee into the chest. Twist with the optional extending of your right leg and binding onto the outside edge of your foot. I think I like this better with a little bend in my knee versus straightening the leg, but it's something I'm kind of exploring in my own practice. I kind of do both each time and see which one lets me kind of sit taller. When you're ready to release, feel free to release. Both arms to the sky, engage the glutes, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, palms to the mat. Step the left foot back. Bring the right foot a little wider and then drop the left knee down. Revolve lizard lunge. Wave the right hand up and over. And maybe you connect right hand to outside of left foot or ankle. You're welcome to kind of embrace the twist and kind of turn your body open. Take some moments here. Feel the left heel squeezing in towards the body. <clears throat> we'll move from here into pyramid pose. This is where two blocks could be helpful, but you don't need them. Fold into your pyramid. Fold over yourself. Feel free to keep a bend in your right knee. I like to bend my right knee so that my upper body can make contact with my lower body and truly fold over myself.
Anjaneyasana. Low crescent lunge. Drop the left knee down. Press the top of the left foot down. And then I'm going to take a variation where I take a block and put it at an angle to press into my left thigh. You don't need to do that, but it's just an option if you happen to have blocks available to you. Arms to the sky. Arms are your choice. Feel free to interlace fingertips and bring palms behind head. Throw your elbows up to the sky and just find a strong lunge. Breathe into it. Two more breaths. Hands come down. Your rendition of half or full splits. I'm going to demo full splits today using some blocks because that's the only way I can do full splits. <laughs> so I like to place a block right under my right hip just to support the position so that I can find the pose. I like to keep a little bend in my front knee, just kind of gives me more control over my pelvis. And then I'm just here. I like to lift the arms up, maybe grab elbows. I know that you can always just take a half splits in this space as well. By no means do you have to do full splits. But I find that they give very different sensations. You know, half splits is more of a forward fold. So more of that folding, introverted energy. Whereas for me, half splits is more of an energizing, uplifting pose. So it's not necessarily about how deep you want to go. It's more kind of what energy do you want to channel right now. And I think that's a question we can always ask ourselves in our practice. What energy do I want to channel right now? It's a good way to form an intention for your practice. Do I want to feel grounded? Do I want to feel expansive? Do I want to feel joy? Or do I just want to feel presence? Maybe both. Release down. It might take you a moment. I know for me it takes me a few moments. I like to pull my right heel back and then just kind of move around, get out of that deep space. And then eventually we're coming to forward fold at the top of the mat just to get ready for that string of postures on the other side. So take a halfway lift in between and then forward fold and step the right foot back. You can bring the left foot a little bit wider. You can bring the right knee down to the ground. And then we'll twist open into our revolved lizard lunge. Option to catch the bind. Again, you're welcome to kind of turn the whole body, turn the whole posture open. I like to stay onto my right fingertips. Keeps me a little bit more nimble. And keeps the weight a little more shifted back into the legs. Release out of the pose, journey toward Parsvottanasana, pyramid pose. Pull the hips back, especially pull the left hip back, and then fold. Find length into the spine. Begin to release, drop the knee down, and work into your version of Anjaneyasana, low crescent lunge, with or without a block under your right thigh, just to provide some kind of scaffolding. Take your arms where they want to go, and focus on the stretch in the front of your right hip flexors. Focus on also creating somewhat of a backbending sensation. I say somewhat of a backbend because it doesn't need to be a deep backbend in itself, just something that gives space to the front of the chest. And we're breathing. Last one. Release down and make your way to half or full splits. Lengthen out your position. Use props as needed. Bend your 
left knee as needed, whether you're in half or full splits. I actually like to bend my left knee in both of those postures. One way I like to stay active in full splits is to kind of have this subtle isometric contraction of almost imagining that I'm tr kind of trying to dig up under me with my left heel. So I'm kind of digging like down into the ground and I'm pulling the heel back and I'm flexing the toes back. It's a way I kind of find a little extra strength in my hamstrings. And then feel free to bring the hands back down, release out of the pose, take as much time as you need. I know that can feel like some deep space to occupy. And then go ahead and find your down dog. So this time, instead of stepping forward, go ahead and step back. From your downward facing dog, let's go ahead and drop the knees down to the mat. Sit back to the heels. Find the little toe squat. Let's take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more like that. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Start to lift up onto the knees. Your choice if the toes stay tucked or if you want to flatten your feet. Let's play with half camel pose. Let's start by going over to the left. And so we'll connect the left hand to the left foot and then drive the hips forward and just stretch the right hand up to the sky. Right? Maybe you create more of a side body stretch or maybe you start to roll open a little bit. Maybe you kind of floss that space. Mostly we're trying to stretch the front body and the right side body. I like to find a stretch like in my right armpit. Slowly release, sway over to the other side, connect the right hand to the right heel, push the hips forward, and stretch into your left side body, left armpit, left rib cage. You're welcome to find a spot and hold it. You're also welcome to open and close a few times. Go ahead and very gently release. Take a moment to sit back onto your heels. Feel free to untuck the toes. And then take the head through some neck rolls. Just find some easy stretches here. Got to give the neck some love. This is where you could even give yourself a little self-shoulder massage or massage your neck with your hands, right? Make contact. We'll move into a trust fall. And if you wanna take a full camel pose or anything like that, you can. But we'll start to lift up onto the knees, toes tucked or not, your choice. And then if you're going camel, you'll go hands to heels. I'm going to do camel on the next round. This round, I'm doing a trust fall. So you can reach arms forward or make an X across your chest and then begin to lean back. Use your core. Engage the thighs. Imagine you're pressing your thighs forward. And just lean back as much as you can and try to support yourself in that space. You're welcome to maybe bounce up and out a few times if you're going for the trust fall. Trust yourself. <laughs> trust your vision. We're here for 10, 9, 8, 7s. Six, five, four, three, two, one, sit up. Sit back to your heels. Take a moment here. I'm gonna take a sip of water. And then option to take another trust fall, option to move into full camel pose. The choice is yours. Option to do a couple more of those half camels with the side body stretches. All right, any of the above, this is our last round. Go for it. Just make sure you're breathing along 
the way. Come out of it, and when you do come out of it, sit back to your heels. Shake it out, take a sip of water, whatever you need to come back to your center. I always like to just kind of roll my wrists around, move my elbows around. All right. From here. Let's go ahead and find our downward facing dog. Step back into a plank and then lift the hips back, down dog. From your down dog, lift the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Step the right foot up to the top of the mat. Warrior two, seal the left heel down and rise up. From warrior two, eagle wrap the arms, wrap the left arm underneath the right. So Garudasana in the arms. You can always just give yourself a bear hug if the full Garudasana bind is just a little bit too much. From here, begin to turn forward into more of a crescent lunge shape in the legs. Lean out, warrior three, with the Garudasana bind. And then from here, shift and enter into Garudasana eagle pose as the left leg crosses over the right leg. Lift the elbows, sit back in the hips. Release and let it go, forward fold. Let the head drop down, relax. Halfway lift, place the hands down, downward facing dog. As you get to down dog, sweep left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step left foot up, find the top of the mat, rotate the right heel down and rise into your warrior pose. Arms open. Bind Garudasana with the right arm underneath the left. Strengthen your legs, strengthen your arms. With mindfulness, turn forward, close off the hips. Once you're turned forward, lean out, warrior three, find your balance. And then we flow from here right into the full Garudasana eagle pose, right leg, over the left. Slowly release, let it go, forward fold. Halfway lift, take an inhale. Exhale, bring the hands down to the mat. Step back into a plank pose. And then from plank pose, lower all the way to the belly. As you come to the belly, we'll take a moment in a sphinx pose. So forearms to the ground. I just had to make sure I didn't lay on my microphone. Forearms to the ground. And arms are in a right angle. So the elbows are directly underneath the shoulders. And then the wrists are out in front of us. Sit high into it, so drop the shoulders from the ears, pull the heart forward. Imagine you're lengthening through your abdomen so the hips are heavy and then you're pulling the heart forward. Imagine you're kind of pulling the elbows back in space even though they're staying still. You just find this kind of subtle, gentle back bend. From here, we'll enter into a half frog pose by bringing the right knee out to its own side. And then what we'll do here as well is we'll half bind the left arm or a, kind of a full bind of the left arm or, or I guess uh, more of a threading of the needle, <laughs> left arm underneath the right shoulder. So we'll kind of find this chest stretch. Again, hopefully I don't lay on my mic. We'll find this chest stretch as well. 
you can rest either ear down on the ground, kind of explore what's comfortable in terms of your head. And then from here, we're peeling open into a twist. So the left hand stays where it is, the legs stay where they are. We're just kind of rolling the right shoulder open, 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 until we naturally enter a twist. It's just kind of an interesting way to get there. And then what I like to do is go ahead and kick my right leg out, straighten my right leg out, and reach my left hand to my right foot. Kind of like how we did when we were standing, when we did the standing uh, revolved leg raise. Feel into the sensation, couple more rounds of breath. Actually, a handful more rounds of breath is what I meant to say. You know, once we get to the floor, it's good to start moving a little bit slower. Even if we're still finding strength, it's good to start moving with a little bit more. Um, just kind of steady, meditative pace. You know, we're attuning our senses, we're moving a little bit more subtler in terms of our energy. The vibration gets a little softer, closer to the ground. From here, if your right leg was straight, re-bend the knee and just roll yourself back through center. And then we'll start in a sort of sphinx pose. And then we'll prepare to uh, bind. So find your half frog with the left leg up to its own side. And then we'll thread the right arm underneath, or excuse me, uh, yeah, the right arm underneath. And then again, rest whatever side of your head that you like. I like to rest my right side of my head on my, kind of like the back of my left hand. And then when you're ready, peel open into the twist. You might have to make some adjustments to make sure you stay on your mat, but you might also be fine with rolling off of your mat. Find the twist as the left shoulder rolls open. And then maybe you extend and kick your left leg out and you kind of mosey. And maybe you even bind right hand to left foot. Continue to observe yourself. Continue to observe your breath. Continue to find the moment, continue to feel. A few more breaths, maybe close the eyes. Start to release, roll yourself through center. Set up for one active back bend. It will be a bow pose. And if you wanna just take another sphinx or if you wanna lay flat on the belly, feel free. I'm gonna go for the bow pose. Find the bind, connect, and then expand. Release. 
And feel free to lay on your belly for as long as you want, but the next place we're going is child's pose. Let's just kind of reset all of that as we come into child's pose. Breathing here, keep settling into deeper space. And then as you lift up, go ahead and find your way into a seated position, legs out in front of you. Cross one shin over the other. Sukhasana into a forward fold. Try to get a good, really good cross on the legs. And if you want even deeper space, then go ahead and move into double pigeon, stacking your shins one on top of the other. Fold into yourself. Breathe, feel, be. Switch into your other side. Opposite shin on top. Find the good cross. Use a blanket under your hips if you like. And then fold. I'm intentionally leaving space here and trying not to speak too much to give you space to explore your own inner being. Because after all, yoga is a practice of self-realization. And although it's great to hear from teachers and to learn the philosophy and to learn certain words, um, the real practice is simply turning our gaze inward and uh, with, with the goal of realizing the true nature of our own being. And again, um, I believe the, the only way for that really to happen, for us to really come to that understanding, to this realization, is our own work. It's our own work of tuning inward and finding the self, uncovering the self, seeing the self. We have to let go of any rush, we have to find total patience and acceptance. And it's up to us to turn that gaze inward and to observe the self with non-judgment, non-attachment, just observation and curiosity to understand. Let's release, let's open the legs. Wide-legged seated forward fold. Once again, any props are available to use that you might have. You can be active in the legs and thighs, or you can just soften into space. Let your breath keep flowing through you. What I like to imagine at the end of a practice is that the breath can flow a little bit easier. We've opened up space in the body, we've opened the windows, so now just let the air flow.
Maybe you even make some sounds with the breath that sound like a gust of wind. We're slowly going to release out of the fold. We'll make our way onto our backs where we'll prepare for a few final back bends. We'll go through three rounds of active bridge followed by a uh, option for supported bridge or supported fish pose. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around this way. Bring the feet to the mat, set up for your bridge and when you're ready, Engage through the legs and find your bridge pose. Squeeze the glutes, hug the inner thighs together. Last moment of strength for the practice. Slowly release. You have a moment in between rounds. If you want, you can take a happy baby, a plow pose, or you can just rest. Feet to the ground, bridge pose, or wheel pose, round two out of three. Go ahead and enter, elevate. Let it go, hips down to the ground. Once again, rest, take child's pose or take plow pose. I'm gonna take a plow this time. Release and prepare for bridge or wheel. Round three out of three. Go ahead and enter. and then come down. Lay flat on the ground. If you would like to move into a supported back bend as your final one of the practice, you could move into supported bridge pose with the blocks under your hips. You could take some moments in supported fish pose with a block under your shoulders. Or this is also time that you could move into Shavasana. To be honest, I'm feeling complete in my body and I'm gonna lay in Shavasana. But if you'd like to take any of those supported positions, you can. It's kind of like whatever you need to close the practice. Maybe if it's morning time, you take one of those back bends and give yourself a little bit more energy before you move through your day. Or maybe if it's like me, 
where you are. If it's evening time, then maybe you take this opportunity to rest, to wind down, and to find stillness. Shavasana represents the process of becoming nothing, of becoming emptiness. And this isn't a, a bad thing, it's a beautiful thing, right? Because becoming nothing just gives us a blank canvas to paint our next actions on. Every time there is a destruction, it's just the precursor to creation. Anytime there's death, it's just a foreshadowing of birth or rebirth. And just like anytime there's an inhale, it foreshadows an exhale. Every time there's an exhale, we anticipate the inhale. Time is circular, not linear. And we find ourselves right in the center of that circle. Continue to rest here. If you took fish or bridge, then you're welcome to make your way into Shavasana, join the rest of us. Let time slow down a little bit. You can stay where you are, or if you like, you can begin the process of transitioning to a seated position for a moment of meditation and breath. I like to sit on a block, either cross-legged or on my shins. Today I'm on my shins. Take your time getting set up. Just try to sit nice and tall as you get here. Maybe you let the palms land on the thighs. Maybe you bring the hands to heart center, whatever feels natural. And then close the eyes or lower the gaze. Take an inhale. Take another inhale. Sip in a little bit more. Exhale out. Inhale, another inhale, sip in a little more, pause at the top, exhale, one more, inhale, sip in a, or another inhale, hmm. sip in a little bit more, Hold that at the top, open the mouth, exhale. Resume your natural breathing. 
We'll end the practice with three ohms. You can join me or just receive. Inhale. Oh. I bow to you in all of your efforts today. Thank you for joining to share this space of practice with me and with us here at Daily Sadhana. Amazing job. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. I hope you can find presence and compassion in the ways that you need to. And I hope to see you soon here on the mat. Until next time, peace.